Hi, welcome to product review by Robojax. My name is Ahmed Shamshiri. In this video, we are going to do the review of this low voltage uninterrupted power supply or UPS from Rootronix USA. This can be used to supply 5 volts from uh, micro USB or from this input to your device while the power is available. Once the power shuts down, automatically the battery will be connected and 3.7 volts will be converted to 5 volts. And if you have 12 volt version, the output will be 12 volts available to your device until the power is available. Once the power is available, the battery will be charged. This is a module that can supply 5 volts up to 2 ampere from lithium battery, from one lithium battery, and the power can be either from micro USB or external 5 volts directly and it will supply power here. This is available as 12 volt version where you can remove the module and replace it with 12 volt version where you can get a 5.5 millimeter barrel connector for 12 volts in both cases with the input of 5 volts. So this can be used to power Raspberry Pi, Arduino, or maybe a mobile device, or for any other purpose that you need. So this will be uninterrupted power supply for those applications. Let's get started with this. Rootronix has paid me and sent me this module for review. I'm going to do an honest review. I will explain everything that this module can do. And there will not be any bias because I've been paid for this. Here is an example of how UPS might be used. We have an Arduino that needs 5 volts via USB. I'm connecting it to this UPS or uninterrupted. And right now there is no power because uninterrupted power supply does not supply power from battery directly. The job of this one is that you should have power. The power is turned off. After that you can get power. Like to USB, pay attention to the light. Now we have power because it's coming from micro USB. The 5 volts come and goes here. I can connect it. Instead of this, I can remove and connect 5 volts to these two pins. It will work fine. But we can connect only to either micro USB or to this terminal, not for both. Now this is powered up. And if I disconnect the power, you can see that the Arduino is on. And that is because this 3.7 volts from this lithium battery is being converted. This is a boost converter module and we are getting power. Now, this can supply with maximum of 2 ampere from this port if you need it. Running time depends on the capacity of your battery. If, when the power comes back, if you connect it, you don't see anything, but the battery is being charged, which I'm going to demonstrate and measure the current all the current for the input and output, so you will see. Here is the Rootronix website. Let's click on product. The product that we are looking for is this product, which is $24.95 US. And this will be shipped if you purchase it via PayPal to the US, but for outside USA, contact them. So if I click on it, here is a module. There are some and this is a 5 volt version. We will have this type of connector. But if you choose the 12 volt version with this module, you will have this type of connector where you can supply power with 5.5 millimeter barrel jack uh, for the device that you can connect. And as we said, it's available in 5 and 12 volts. And here, when you purchase it, you have two options 5 volts or 12 volts. You can also purchase the 5 volts or 12 volts module separately in case if you want to use it for different purpose on the same module. So here the 5 volts or 12 volts, the price is $12.95. So we have wrapped up product, a nice USB cable, some documentation, is 81 millimeter, by 84, 
and we have switch that sticks out and this USB connector also sticks out all of these 23.6 23.6 millimeters you will supply power or take power from this port for any application such as Arduino, Raspberry Pi or any other application 5 volts up to 2 ampere the power will be supplied either via external USB or 5 volt directly connected to these ports and it will when while it's not used it will charge the battery and supply the power if the power for some reason is disconnected this will be uninterrupted and the battery will be connected directly and depending on how much energy or power you consume or depending on the capacity of your battery you might get up to 30 minutes of continuous power at 2 ampere which we are going to test it this is a 5 volts module and there is also 12 volts version sold once you insert it from the same uh, device you will get 12 volts output from the same 3. 7 volts battery without a heatsink this can supply the power and with the functionality this is amazing on here we have at this port we have micro usb where you can connect your charger wall charger whatever you have a 5 volts can be supplied from here or you can connect here the positive and negative to these two pins from external 5 volts be careful that either you use this uh, terminal input or you can you use this micro USB connector do not supply power from both otherwise the device might get damaged here we have a power switch where you can turn it on and off and this is USB type A connector for your USB power where you will connect it and the other side whatever type you have will be connected to your device to supply power with the 5 volts version if you have 2500 milliampere battery it will run approximately 25 minutes at 2 ampere and keep in mind if you reduce it to 1 ampere this time should be doubled and so forth and for the 12 volts version with the same type of battery 2500 milliampere hour again 20 minutes at 1 ampere uh, current load we cannot uh, for sure say it because this battery must be fully charged and our life of the battery when battery is new it will keep more charge and if the battery gets older as the call depending on the quality of the battery the amount of charge will be less so uh, there is no uh, very precise figure for this but generally with 2500 milliampere hour battery you get about 25 minutes at 5 volts 2 ampere And here are the specification for the module, the important one, input power, minimum is 0.2 watts, which is approximately 35 milliampere at 5 volts, and maximum which again outputs would be 22 watts or 5.5 volts or approximately 4 ampere. So these are the most important values that you need to know and efficiency is 75% at 2 ampere 85% at 1 ampere at 12 volts as you can see output power is 12 watt 4.5 and volts and 12 watts 5.4 volts and 2.3 ampere that's the maximum and at 12 volts it will be 12.1 and 1.1 ampere at 5 volts over current protection kicks in with a minimum of 2.3 up to 2.5 so between these values it will protect the device this is called hiccup so it disconnects the power or protects it waits for a few seconds to see if there is a correction or something and turns it on back for 12 volts the same way it's 1.2 to 1.3 ampere output ripple at 2 ampere is 10 millivolts peak to peak or maximum of 20 so between 10 to 20 millivolts peak to peak the battery will operate between 3.3 .3 to 4.2 volts so when it's charged at 4.2 the charge will stop and when the voltage drops at 3.2 so the battery operation will stop battery current charge is 200 milliampere minimum and maximum 
with 400 milliampere and there is a discharge protection up to 10 amperes between 10 to 12 amperes if something goes wrong it will drain or draw up to 10 but not more than that so it will shut it off between 10 to 12 and this is the under voltage protection between 2.7 to 2.8 then the battery will be disconnected to protect it Now let's have a look at the components. I'm going to look here first at this port, uh, these components. So that is 8205A. The data sheet for 8205A. As you can see, this is a dual MOSFET with maximum drain current of 6 ampere. Let's have a look at this chip. As you can see, the number has been wrapped off. So this is this says that 393 and then KF KF 02G. So this must be op pump 393. Here is a data sheet for low offset dual comparator. As you can see, this is they have different packages, and we are looking at this SOIC8. This suffix. And let's have a look at this part. And that is 4056. 056 is a 1 ampere standalone linear lithium ion charger with thermal regulation. So this is a battery charger. And let's have a look at this side. Let's have a look at this, at this chip first. So this is the same op amp or comparator that was used on the other side. Let's have a look at this piece. That is R4401. I couldn't find the data sheet for this. And on this 5 volts module, this is just an inductor with these capacitors. Here Again, we have two chips. Let's have a look at this first. So this has been cleared. We cannot see it. As you can see, this says D. So it must be a diode. It has been cleared, so we don't see the number. Now, let's start the test. I've connected now 5 volts here. Let me show you the voltage first exactly 5 volts at the input the device is on here at this point let's measure the voltage across the battery see without the load without any charge what is the voltage so at the moment it's 4 volts but when the battery is started it will check the status of the battery and this voltage will be adjusted accordingly measure the output voltage here this is on and if I put the battery it will not make any difference now I'm going to connect this directly to the USB don't worry about the battery it's about USB so here is the output voltage there's no load at the moment now Let's put the battery while this is on and see if there is any difference. No difference. You can see we are getting 5.32 volts at the output while the input is 5 volts, exactly 5 volts. So this has boosted a little. Now let me disconnect the power from here. And as you can see, there is no interruption. So there is no power at the input, but we have it. Now, let me disconnect the battery. If I connect the battery, there is no output. Why? Because this is UPS, which means it should have external power. And then when it is interrupted, the battery will help. 
Now I've connected the external power, 5 volts here, and as you can see, 35 milliampere is being consumed. The module is not connected. Let's, let's put this battery. And let me show you the voltage of the battery first. And let's insert it and you will see the current here. Nothing is connected to the UPS. And it was around 30 or 35, so now 225 milliampere is being charged, or 230. So now the battery is being charged and the output is ready. Let me now connect the load while the battery is being charged. So this is now off. Let me turn it on and see what happens before connecting the load. When I turn it on, nothing happened. Let's connect Arduino here. So this is now powering up. Arduino is powered up and the current has increased by 100, almost 70 milliampere. So let's disconnect it, 260. Now let me demonstrate powering it up via micro USB. R remember I told you that you can connect either to micro USB or to external 5 volts, not in both. Otherwise it will damage the board. So I've disconnected the wire. Now I'm going to connect from my micro USB, from computer or charger, doesn't matter. And this is connected to Arduino. And as soon as it powers up, you will see the light will start running so the LEDs will blink now we have power here for the branding purpose I have to put this for any reason if micro USB power is off as you can see it is perfectly working but if I turn it off so if I turn it off and turn it on it is not working so I have to connect external power, turn it on, and then if external power or charge is disconnected, it's holding. Now at this moment, if I disconnect the battery, the power is out, and if I power it up again, it It will not turn on until I connect external power. Now this is the total charge current for the module and for the battery. Let's just measure the current to the battery only. Now this is the current directly to the battery. 239 voltage battery, the battery voltage. So battery is being charged at 3.2 volts at that amount of current, 230 milliampere. This voltage will increase and the current will be reduced slowly. And here now I have connected the output from the module using this special USB to alligator to my electronic load. This is just the interface for the software. Here is my electronic load. This is the electronic load DL3031 and these are the two terminals that from the circuit will be connected in here and we will see the voltage here and the current. And we will see the output voltage from this in here and also the current. I can set the current whatever current I want. So we can see the input current and that is the voltage for the battery here at one ampere and turning it on now one ampere is being supplied by this module to the load and here is the voltage you're reading it and in terms of power it's 5.2 watts and battery is also being charged because it's one ampere let's turn it off 280 so from charge if we subtract this if my battery is fully charged it will supply the one ampere let me disconnect the power to see if the battery can supply it 
it doesn't mean that the module is not um, high quality enough if my battery doesn't have charge the module can't do anything so let me disconnect the power so you can see it it will go zero and here one ampere is being supplied from the battery which is 3.7 volts here let me show you which is 3.8 volts and we are drawing here one ampere so this is a boost converter now supplying the current input is reduced uh, let's go let's go now 1.5 As you can see, we are drawing 1.5 ampere, 5 volts, with a 3.7 volts at the input from the battery. Input current is zero because I have disconnected my power. So let's go with 2 ampere. Now I've set this 2 ampere. 2 ampere is being supplied by this boost converter. Input voltage of the battery, you can see it. Input current is zero because we have not connected it. And this is amazing. With two ampere, uh, let's see the thermal image. So the module is very cool. Forty-four degrees Celsius, and the hottest spot I put my pen here is exactly in here so so this is very cool very nice majority of components can handle up to 80 degrees or 90 degrees but this is 44 and amazing two ampere current is going let's just supply the power so the battery let's see when the power comes back what happens as you can see the current is now increased because the current now supplies and charges the battery the battery voltage slowly increased and the load is two ampere Let me see at the back. Let's have a look at the thermal image from the back to see if this is heating up on this side. Very cool. Same thing, 44 or 43 degrees Celsius. This is amazing. The hottest spot is now here, exactly in here. So these connectors are the hot spot. The rest is very cool. So without the battery, 2 ampere output results in 2.17 ampere input. Now if I turn off the load, minus 53 or 52 milliampere, which is being wasted by this module. And also my electronic load, when it reads it, it adds some current. Uh, let's let's re disconnect it. So 37 milliampere this module needs continuously in idle mode. So 37 to subtract from this 2157 minus 37 2120 milliampere is input 2 ampere is output with 5.1 volts here is the efficiency And as I've shown you, if I put this, this will add around 200 more current milliampere if this is not fully charged. So 2.1 will be 2.35 something. 2.380, so around 220 milliampere was added into the charged current. And now we are going to measure the 
efficiency when the battery is used. At the moment, here I have connected, I'm measuring the current that is going to the battery. Negative means the current goes to the battery, battery is being charged. External power is connected. And now I'm con I've connected this to the load. I put also the thermometer here. This is degrees Celsius, 23 degrees. At the moment, the voltage is 8.6. And the output, you read it here. Let's go with 100 milliampere and see. I'm going to disconnect the external, the external um, micro USB. Now, and now let me show you my load, electronic load that is connected here. Is this electronic load is connected via USB, and it needs some current. This this is currently showing 50. And if I disconnect my load, you will see that this is 28. So 28 milliampere is needed by the module. And this load, now when I connect it here, it becomes 51. So 23 milliampere is consumed by my electronic load. I'm going to subtract that from the, from the total current. But the current that you read is exact current plus that extra. So this 1 ampere is exactly 1 ampere, which I'm going to subtract 23 from this current that we are reading. Let's go with 100 milliampere and see the efficiency. Now 100 milliampere is being consumed from the load so the battery is supplying 100 milliampere and as you can see this is the current from the battery with input 3.83 volts 100 milliampere 3.53 volts here is the efficiency so i changed it now to 200 milliampere and subtracting my load, you will see the efficiency. Three hundred milliampere. I'm changing it. So now this module is supplying from the battery three hundred milliampere at the output, and input current is five hundred and forty subtracted twenty-three. Here is the efficiency. Now let's go with 400 milliampere. It becomes now 704 and input is input voltage. The battery is 3.78 with 5.29 output, 400 milliampere. Here is the efficiency. Now let's go with 500 milliampere. So now the load, this battery is supplying 500 milliampere. And put the battery current is 873 with 5.27 volts voltage at the output, 3.76 at the input. Here is the efficiency. Now I'm going 600. With 600, it becomes 1 ampere, 1.06, 1046 milliampere, 3.75 volts. And here is the efficiency. Let's go with 700 milliampere at the output from the battery, 3.73 volts input, 5.2 volts at the output. Here is the efficiency. Let's go with 800 milliampere. With 800 milliampere, the current changed now, and here is the efficiency. Nine hundred milliampere is drawn from the load. The current is one point five nine 
for 1594 mA with 900 mA at the output heavy wave efficiency. Go with 1 ampere. Now with 1 ampere, 3.66, 1.792, here is the efficiency. One point two. Now one point two becomes two point one nine eight with three point six volts. Here is the efficiency. One point four, two point six, and ampoles. Here is the efficiency. Now 1.5 ampere at the output from the battery, 2.88 milliampere is being drawn, and here is the efficiency. One point seven is input, and as you can see, input current is now three ampere. And here is the efficiency. One point eight. That becomes now three point seven with three point four four volts. Here is the efficiency. Now I replace the battery and I'm disconnecting my micro USB. So now this is the current from the battery. Voltage is 3.85, input current is 3.16 ampere, output is 1.8 and here is the efficiency. I set it to 2 ampere, that's the maximum that we can go. Input current is 3.6 with 3.8 volts at the input, and here is the efficiency. So this pen ground and line out is when the battery reaches totally drained and there is no more power left, maybe 15 seconds or more, it can send this pen to low, this is open collector, so you can detect it using microcontroller or whatever means you have and safely turn off that device before it shut down unexpectedly. So this is a great feature that you can use. I cannot demonstrate it because I have to drain this battery fully and see how it works but this is how it functions. And here is the efficiency result. This axis shows the efficiency from 70 to 85, and this is the current from 100 milliampere to 2000 milliampere. Each line is 100. And as you can see, at 200 milliampere, it jumped to 80%. And the highest that we got was at 400 and 500 milliampere which was about 83 percent, 83 point something at this point and up to 700 milliampere. Then the efficiency is dropped as the current increased but also the voltage of my battery has reduced. So the voltage of the, as the voltage of the battery is reduced the efficiency is also reduced. At this point I have switched the battery and I placed a new battery for real life application the battery voltage will be reduced so it come up to here at 1700 milliampere as you can see the efficiency is about 72 percent but as soon as i switch the battery the voltage increased and the efficiency is around 72 73 76 77 percent so as you can see, the efficiency is between 71 to 
So for conclusion, I would say that with the efficiency, with the functionality and features is true, uh, except uh, you have to make sure that this module has some kind of housing, otherwise it's bad just bare and it should be protected. Uh, and the final, the version that you will purchase might not have these wires, so these are simple correction in the final production, but this is the module that you are getting when you purchase it. I definitely recommend this because of the test that's shown, everything worked as promised. Please thumb up the video if you learned something and found this useful and also subscribe to my channel, it's really appreciated.